Hello and welcome to the next video in the series. On this one, we're going to be talking about the pipeline. The pipeline is critical and power challenge of great importance. What does it allow us to do? To send output from one command to the other to the other. So we can actually pipeline multiple commands and the output of one feeds the other and that one will feed the next in that pipeline or process that we're trying to do. So how, here's a very simple example. I'm just going to start a process called notepad. Here I have that process. Now I'm going to get that process. I'm going to stop it using the pipeline. So what is going to happen is once I get that process, that process is going through to go to via the pipeline to the next commandlet and it's going to take the action. And we're going to go deeper into how does it figure out what am I supposed to do with what I'm getting? So normally when we work with commandlets, they generate multiple objects and they get mapped to a parameter on the other side. That's what the pipeline is doing. And the way it does its mapping will depend on how that parameter is actually configured um, on the other side to what we have on our right. Uh, and one of the things I like is that it will process one commandlet or one object at a time. So for example, let's say I create a hundred notepad processes. So what I'm going to be doing here is one to a hundred. And then for each one of those numbers, I'm going through the pipeline, I'm going to do something. So for each object, don't worry, we'll cover for each object later on in the series. Uh, so I'm going to start the notepad process and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do windows tile, um, hit, no, not hidden, uh, minimize so we can see it in my task bar. So let's go here. And now we have a hundred notepad processes. One of the things I like is that it pauses execution. So the first command with when it executes and generates one object and sends to the pipeline, the pipeline will pause execution on the first command that it has on its left. It's going to grab that single process process uh, and do whatever it needs to do with it. And then uh, it will grab the next. So we're not filling up memory. So if I do get notepad processes, instead of getting all 100 notepad processes, I'm going to be getting one at a time. And we can look at this by just doing that verbose. So we can see that we're processing each and and every one of those individually. And as you can see, the number just keeps rising. So it is taking them by order of that pit number. So I'm going through order one process, process that I'm finished, and then I'm grabbing the next one. Uh, I'm unpausing the execution of the first commandlet, grabbing the next object, processing that, and so on. So, so this saves quite a bit of memory. In fact, it saves quite a bit of code uh, if you've ever programmed in any other language, for example, Python, Ruby, uh, C sharp. So this actually takes a lot of that work out of us. If we want to learn a bit more about the pipeline, one of the critical commandlets, one of the trifecta that I mentioned, help. So here we can do actually help pipeline is going to take us to about underscore pipeline. Uh, remember, trifecta is uh, get command, get help, get member. Uh, and help is one of those. And as we can see, we have quite a bit of information with very good examples. It even goes very deeply into how the pipeline actually works. Uh, as I have to say, Microsoft does awesome work when it comes to their documentation. Also, this documentation is open to the public, so we can actually contribute to it openly via GitHub. Also, the C also subjects, I actually do recommend that you go and read those also after you watch the video. So now let's uh, look at how it makes this decision. Uh, so if we look at the um, parameters of stop process, so let's go here, parameters, and I'm going to get them all. Uh, remember when we covered help information, we have required position default value, accept pipeline input. That is the critical one, accept pipeline input. So if we look at this, we're going to see that um, Let's see, I said pipeline input false. So this one doesn't take, so we won't match on that. If we keep going down here, we have one, which is set pipeline input. Yep, and it accepts by property name. That means that uh, whatever object I get from one side, the, the property name matches this the name of this parameter. I'm gonna match it to it. Here we have another one, which is by value, which means the type of object that I'm getting. I'll match it uh, to it. 
here I have another one which is name which is by property name also so I can have multiple parameters that accept uh, the same type of pipeline input uh, you may say uh, and let's go into how it makes this decision how does does having multiple uh, pipeline inputs actually affect what we're actually doing so for this we're going to um, for example here we have five process so it only takes a process by value and uh, we only have two by property uh, one of the things to, uh, that we have to know when we're working with the pipeline is that first it will match by value then by property unless we have uh parameter sets if we have parameter sets is only going to match on one of those parameters it's going to choose one of those parameter sets and match by those it is first going to do parameter sets that take by value to illustrate this i have a script that we're going to uh, where I have multiple functions in it that i created to illustrate this decision process and then we'll go a bit in into the troubleshooting on how you can troubleshoot if all of a sudden we match a multiple parameter sets and the script's going to go like hey it's not the default which one should i go and we're going to be looking at how does that binding actually works in the background because it's actually parameter binding is how it's called so here we have one no parameter sets value from pipeline by property name so it will match by property name true here i have another one value from pipeline also true and um, no parameter set so we're going to if, if i match depending on which one i'm going to uh, show the name or show the output on which i match um, and we're going to show both in this case because we don't have parameter sets so let's do cd see user carlos let's go into my desktop here let's do dot sourcing so we add this to my current session uh let me add the pipeline now we have the functions in uh my session to work with so let's do get process and let's get powershell we're going to have i think two powershell processes since the uh code actually creates a couple uh and let's do test pipeline one let's run this in fact, let's just get all. Uh, on this one, we can see, hey, submit, and then we get the submit object, then we get submit64, we get submit64 object uh, below that one. And as you can see, I'm matching on both because there's no parameter set. So that means I'm actually populating all of the um, parameters that actually accept via the pipeline. So let's take a look at my test uh, pipeline one function so you can see that it's only it doesn't have parameter sets it's only one single one so it has name and input object now how would it behave if we have parameter sets so i have here one that is by name the other by value you can put whatever name you want and one of the things that we're going to actually see here is that even though my default is the property one it's always going to try to do um, by value. So here, as you can see, we have two different parameter sets, two different ways that we can execute this function. So let's do test pipeline two. As you can see, now it only match by value. Hmm. And what would happen if I have multiple parameter sets that take by value? So let's take a look at another function for this that I have, which is test pipeline three. On this one, we have multiple that take by value. One of them takes input object. The other one take, uh, takes into a property called AO object. As you can see, one takes process, the other uh, PS object. PS object is actually another way to reference any object uh, inside of PowerShell. Let's go here. Let's do get process and let's go three. And we're getting a bunch of errors. Now the error is parameter set cannot be resolved using specified named parameters. That means that it cannot, it's all of a sudden, hey, I first checked by, by value. I have multiple parameter sets that take by value. I can match on both of them. Which one do I choose? Um, and I have a default parameter set, 
set for value. Now, if we want to look at how it actually works under the covers, we use the trace command. So let's do input, uh, let's do by name, uh, PS by uh, parameter binding. Let's look through this. Um, it's in PS, I think it's parameter binding, actually. Check my notes here. Yeah, I think it's parameter binding. Parameter binding, and let's go here. Expression. This is the code that I'm going to be doing the trace on. And I'm going to do get process, and I'm going to do PowerShell. I'm going to have multiple of this, and I'm going to send it to test pipeline three, so we can look at the error. Um, now the out, it won't show you the output unless you do tag uh, PS host. So it sends the output back to you, um, the debug output, uh, PS host, and then I'm going to save all of this stuff in a file. So let's do file. Uh, no, it's fall path. Fall path? Yeah, fall path. So let's do dash fall path. I'm going to save it into a TXT file so it's easier to read. Now, when I execute this, it's going to do parameter binding for all of the commandlets that I have there. It's going to actually show me all of the debug information. So for the first one, which is get process uh, PowerShell, one of the things that we're going to notice is that it match uh, by position. So it match by position, it bind it, uh, the string parameter into the parameter name because, because it used positional parameters. And here you can see the binding of it. And you can see the logic that it's actually using for doing this. Now, if you look at the other side of the pipeline itself, we're going to see that it checked, oh, is it mandatory parameter? Uh, we're still in get process. So it's test pipeline. So it did, hey, uh, let me match by name. Uh, no name was not specified. Do I match by position? No position doesn't take account here. Um, does it other mandatory checks here? And as you can see here, uh, there was no match for it to take into consideration. And let's see here, here we have a success. So it actually match. Here we have another one, input object match, AO object match. So we have two that match actually under one single parameter set. And then it can actually decide to which parameter set it was supposed to go. That's when it actually just goes in and looks at the inside of command lib binding for the one that says uh, default parameter set name. Here you can see the AO object, and we have the input object over here, which is the other one where we also had success. So as you can see, we match in two. Um, and I do this exercise. I know it's a bit more advanced than something in the basics, but uh, it, this is an error that you're going to get a lot if you're writing your own code or you're dealing with other people's code and you need to figure out what actually happened. Um, this trace command actually comes super useful for you. Um, so do keep that in mind. So um, right now the pipeline has been deciding by input object. So how does it behave by property name? So that means that the object has to be the same. Yes, no. Um, in fact, let's look first at the debug output so you guys can see it. So you can see it's uh, it looks a lot cleaner here. It allows me to do searches on it. And I do prefer this uh, output to the one on the screen. So that's, that's why typically when I do traces, I save to a file. So now let's look at the uh, parameter itself. One of the things that we can see when we use get members, that get member why is it in the trifecta? Because it gives me the type. Also lists all of the properties, so I know on what am I going to be matching. So far, we've um, I focused on the by value. 
So what happens when it doesn't match by value and it has to do by property name? So let's um, take a, uh, let's do an example here. I'm going to create a CSV file that one of the properties is going to be the name of the process. And then the other property just has a bunch of garbage in it. Um, so let's do name and then let's do description. So now you have, we'll have two properties when we import this one called name, the other description. One is going to be called notepad and the other one, we're just going to put the notepad process. Let me save this as a CSV file. Processes.csv. Let's create a hundred uh, notepad processes again. In fact, let me show you uh, first import CSV. So you guys can see how it looks. See name description. If we get send it to get member, you're going to see that both of them are going to be no properties. So I have one called uh, name, the other one description, no properties. So the one that we're going to match, as we saw before, is the one called name that takes my property name. So if we create a hundred notepads and I'm in the wrong path, let's uh, remove the dot slash here and let's do notepad. I'm going to create a hundred notepads. Let's take a look. So you guys can see that I have a hundred notepad processes running on this machine. And what I'm going to do is uh, when I import this CSV, I'm going to actually kill it. I'm going to stop all the notepad processes on it because we're going to be matching my name. So uh, just so you guys can see, oh, here, here you go. I have a hundred notepad processes. I click enter and it's going to disappear from my taskbar. And what it did, since I couldn't match by value, I went and looked and match by property name. So if I, you can see it here, help stop process and no, no pipeline. Uh, it's dash parameter and no uh, name. Let's see one that I want. And here you can see I said pipeline input true by property name. So it matched on that one. So now you know how we can actually match from one side to the other. Um, I do hope that you found the video useful. Remember, uh, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down and also include a comment on ways that I can improve if you didn't like the content. And also, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And I hope, as always, that you find the information useful. Thank you.